Um, there's 140,000 employment agencies, a lot of them. More importantly, global turnover is 259 billion. Why is that important? Well, there's more and more agencies now who can operate in Ireland, but actually get business outside of Ireland. Country leaders, Japan and USA. Japan have a huge amount of agencies. USA would be second. But Europe, 40% of worldwide sales. Of the 140 million agencies worldwide, China has the most, but unfortunately there's very little data from China, and the reason they weren't one of the top two agencies up there is the actual fee value is very, very small still, but that will probably change. But an interesting stat on that is if you look at the UK, 11,500 agencies with 60 million staff, 300 million, uh, sorry, three people, 300 million people in the USA, and they've only got 13,000 agencies. So if you didn't know it before, the UK is very, very, very competitive if anyone's trying to get in there right now. Here are the top 10 agencies. Again, most of you would know this. Interestingly, Ransal has probably taken over manpower as number two, but there's really a big three. More importantly, though, would be the fact that none of these are recruitment companies anymore. They're part of a recruitment company, but they do a lot, lot more. And whether you like it or not, the RPO space um, is getting bigger and bigger. And most of these organizations realize that they're not going to make it all out of recruitment. They've got to be doing something else as well. Uh, two graphs at the moment. Just look at the trend of the graph. This is basically saying the amount of agency workers topped up in 2010. It's starting to go down again. This is only till 2012. But it's starting to flatten out and go up again. And the, all the views say that agency workers not only will go up, they'll go up more than permanent. People will start using agency workers more in terms of a temporary capacity than a permanent capacity. One last graph. Um, this is GDP growth versus number of agency workers. Basically, is the trend when GDP goes up, so do agency workers. So it's a great thing we can talk to the Irish government about. We are helping create jobs by getting people in the door. That actually does create employment. So 12.9 people gained age, uh, work last year through agency, 200,000 in Ireland, which is actually punching above our weight. And I think we, we're recruitment agencies for going to Europe and hearing some of the challenges in countries like France and Germany and Holland with workers' councils, we can consider ourselves very lucky with a lot of our employment legislation. So then I looked at some of the questions they asked. So the staffing industry analysts do questions every year to recruitment companies around the world. And they asked what factors were good or bad. And I think we're a very optimistic lot, so we don't mind most things. But they asked about things like the internet, about legal, about staff shortages. And basically, we said the internet and globalization was good, and everything else was bad. So we're actually really a miserable lot. Okay? We actually don't think anything is good by the internet and globalization. They also said, what's, what marketing tactic is the best bang for your buck? And it's interesting. Company website sponsoring conferences is still right up there where things like direct mailers, email newsletters are going down. But this is what we are saying. This is globally what people are saying. But then they ask clients, what would you like agencies to improve? And I know what you think you're going to see in this, which is price, cost, and of course it's going to be there. And I'm not naive to think that it's not the first thing most clients talk to us about, but that doesn't mean it's the most important thing to them. The most important thing is quality, worker quality. And maybe that is very clearly aligned to the fact that in a lot of industries right now, there is a massive skill shortage. So they're actually trying to find the best person. Don't get me wrong, you will still get talked about price before you walk in the door. But when we go on to talk about things like referrals and your brand, people get referred to you not because of your price, generally because of the quality of you and the workers you hire. So think about that. So that's a really positive thing because that's almost completely opposite to the fact that everything's moving towards a commoditization and RPO. Also, how do you hear about agencies? Referrals, number one, somebody called me. So guess what? The phone isn't dead yet. We don't all have to move to social media and email yet. Or they met you at a conference. So continue to use referrals. Selling works. Picking up the phone works. Your website works. Things like social media. Interesting, while we use it a huge amount from the Canada point of view, very few clients are currently saying that's the reason they're using agencies. Again, it's a trend. It may change, but that's where it is right now. So that's some global trends. I then thought I'd talk about Ireland. Um, and just some of the data we got. So very quickly in Ireland, we asked people about last year and what had changed. F firstly, I put up a word cloud, which I'm very disappointed I put this up now, because people were asked three words that represented Ireland, and they took them all. Um, unfortunately, with the day that's in it, broke, drink, and rain is unfortunately too relevant, uh, given the weather outside. But uh, Ireland turned over 1.6 billion versus 1.4 billion the year before. More temps, more perm placements, with the one caveat that the perm placements are lower and probably the margins are lower. Okay, but it's positive. And then we asked people what they thought about next year. We took the conservative number. 14% growth in 2013. 
which is great. We are an optimistic audience in general, and we want things to go well, which is great. But actually, it's positive that people are saying, and people have much higher figures than this, but we look at this as a conservative figure that the industry was saying. So what about the future trends? So what are we hearing about? Well, some of these, as I said, may be relevant, some may not. So the competitors keep coming, job boards, outsourcing, social media, and then other online issues, which I'll talk about in a second. But these are never going to go away. Remember, it was the job boards, now we're worried about social media, now we'll be worried about something else. We need to worry mostly about ourselves, but it is going this way. Okay? We know that it's going from a decentralized or just a preferred supplier relationship to many of the bigger companies are now saying, we want a global agreement with one supplier, and that's becoming more and more challenging for agencies out there because it means more work for slimmer margins. That's not going to change, unfortunately. We need to adapt to it and see how we can change our business model because of it. Social media. It's a bigger buzzword. Again, the challenge I'd say is for all the talk on social media, very few people are able to quantify the number of hires through social media, especially when they try and differentiate from the amount of time people are spending on it. And also you could argue that people aren't actually placing more with social media than they weren't. But guess what? It is a very important trend and something you need to be aware of, but you need to be able to measure the ROI. One thing that's dangerous about social media I always find is that very quickly people read a tweet and they say, well, that's, that's the way it is now. 140 characters, now I've changed my whole mind on something. Thatcher died recently and there was a hashtag, now Thatcher's dead, which was, which was so everybody could see what was going on and what the comments were. But unfortunately, a lot of people thought Cher had died because it says, that also says now that Cher died. So there was a number of people saying, I can't believe that Cher is dead. Do you believe in life after love? So there you go. One tweet or one hashtag can make people think a, an icon like Cher is dead. So we've got to be careful around it. The one piece, though, the staffing industry analysts talked a lot about that I hadn't actually personally seen as much myself was the growth in online staffing providers. So this is different to social media. This is different to just having a, um, a communication tool. These are actually people who at one site, at one level, are actually trying to connect people and clearly could be a massive competitor to our industry. Companies like TaskRabbit on one side, Elance on another. These are very big, or getting very big in the US. Not everything from the US comes here, but we just need to be aware of them. We need to be aware that people are going to try and connect, because they're always going to try and get something cheaper. Our other challenge, which you might say isn't a competitor, is our clients. Because guess what? If we can provide them better solutions and more innovative solutions than they can do themselves, they're not going to use us. Very clear. But you know what? These, this ad was around three or four years ago from Google in the States, but it went around the world, around if you can solve that URL, Google wants you to work for them. A more recent one for tattoo artists was they had people filling in that, because if you could fill in that QR code, you were clearly had a very steady hand. They're very simple things, but if we aren't able to be innovative, if we aren't able to provide them something they can't provide themselves, they're going to use an in-house recruitment team, they're going to say they're just going to use the tools available. So we have to be better. We're going to hear something today about data and how data changes. It's a great book and move, well, movie was okay, but around data analytics and sport. It's becoming more and more important. For those of you who haven't heard the story about a few years ago in Target, a guy walked into Target and got really annoyed that a 16-year-old daughter um, had been sent pregnancy material. He was furious with Target. They apologized. They went back and worked out how, and they spoke to their data algorithm guy who said, well, she's moved to a scented to an unscented shampoo. She started buying certain seeds and she started buying certain vitamin supplements. That would reckon that there's about an 89% chance she's pregnant. As it happened, she was pregnant. So the store knew before uh, her own dad, which isn't great. That's data analytics of the future. Uh, Bullhorn Radar, or Bullhorn, uh, one of our sponsors, have this product called Reach, where they actually can work out as a radar, sorry, called Radar, where they can actually work out when staff members are looking to leave, because we do the similar things. We upgrade our bio, we start connecting with people. So data analytics is not going away. It's going to become more important. The other thing is gamification. This is another trend. This is the space station Entropia, uh, sold for $650,000, which may not seem a lot until you realize it's completely virtual. Somebody spent over half a million euro on something that's virtual. So don't tell me games don't matter. They're very, very big. And companies are now using them. This is a game called The Plague. A company called RMS, which are an insurance actuarial company, which you wouldn't look as cool and trendy and tech, saw this game and realized the same algorithms in this game were the, ga were the same algorithms that they wanted their insurance and actuaries to use. So they actually go into the grad fairs, get people to play this game and have a league table and obviously look to hire the people who are at the top of the list. A lot more fun for the students than going through an assessment center. So it's happening already. It's the idea that we have to have. The one last thing I'd say as well, is, which is definitely getting more 
traction is around the candidate experience. The candidate experience has never not been important, but now every candidate has their own voice. They're all on social media. They can all talk about you. If we don't provide a good service, they're going to talk about us. And as an industry, it's never been more important that we provide a good service so that people talk up our industry. And I think even with all those competitors, the one thing we have to realize is people are people. We're never going to be re replaced by technology, but we absolutely better understand that technology is working at such fast pace that if you haven't looked at how technology can be a game changer in your business, you better. Because people don't know where it's going, but it's certainly going. So takeaways, opportunities are global, which is great, but the reverse is also true. Quality is still critical to clients. They won't talk about it, but it's what they care about, and that's where they'll get the referrals. The industry is faster than ever evolving. Agency workers will continue to rise, which is great news, and the temporary will rise more than the perm. And innovation is key. If you're not going to be more innovative, why will clients use you? And finally, don't ignore the candidate experience. But guess what? It's still a great place to work. And I share this with a few people in my own organization. This is a guy called Mamides, someone I wouldn't expect to know, medieval philosopher. But he talked about the eight levels of charity. You might go, what's that all about? So he talked about giving charity positively and negatively. So if you said, what's the worst way to give charity is to give unwillingly. So he went up in all the different ways you can give to charity. The, the second best way being giving to charity when nobody even knows you gave, which is a very, very altruistic way to give, where you can give money, but you don't need any of the recognition. But here's the thing. The number one way was to give a gift or a loan or enter into a partnership with him or find employment for him so that he is no longer dependent upon another. And I think we cannot leave this conference without remembering. We find people work. We don't always find them the job of their dreams. Great when we do, but we find people employment. We get people back working again. And there's talking about a lost generation at the moment. People who don't work in their 20s have a much better chance of not working in their 50s, suffering from depression, low self-esteem. So we need to get people back to work. We're one of the vehicles to make that happen. So we need to enjoy what we do, be positive about it, talk up our industry. So have a great conference. Thank you very much.